Say what's up, kiddo. Say what's up, doggo. Sorry, she's freaking crusty crust. Hey, y'all. So, Buddy and I, <laughs> we are back. Um, and if you can see by the title, I'm going to quickly talk a little bit about how I, <laughs> don't be abusive, <laughs> how I pretty much grew Buddy's hair back. Um, as you all can see, look at his paws. Um, he still kind of nibbles a little bit on the back sometimes, but what are you doing? <laughs> but for the most part, Buddy is doing pretty well. Um, the video will mostly be on him since he seems to be the main attraction in everyone's life. But, um, yeah. So, for starters, I'll just quickly give a backstory. But I got Buddy in June of 2020. <laughs> so, I got him during the pandemic. Say what's up. Um, and for the most part, um, Buddy was fine. And then... Uh, I would say like about a week into having him, his paws started to kind of like crack and flare up and it was looked like some sort of uh, allergic reaction. Buddy, come here. Come here. Come to the camera. Um, so being a new dog mom, I immediately took him to an emergency vet and um, they had given him like a cone. They gave him some antibiotics. Um, they gave him a shampoo and they had put him on Apoquel. So Apoquel is a medication for dogs who suffer from allergies. So allergies can be food allergies. It can be skin allergies. It can even be just environmental, um, you know, grass, carpet, etc. So that did not really work for a long time and I also didn't really follow it simply because I won't lie as a dog owner I do care about how my dog looks so I hated the cone especially because I only had him for like two weeks at that time <laughs> right pup someone's turning 10 this year <gasps> 10 years old so uh this was in June so for a couple of months, the, the the he started, well, within those few months, he just continued to like lick his paws. He continued to chew his paws. Hair was falling off. We went to a couple of vets. They had prescribed him Apoquel. Um, the second vet I had took him to, um, she prescribed him Apoquel twice a day, half of a pill. And that was very helpful. But he still would lick his paws. Like it, it. I don't. I don't even understand what it was. Um, so I ended up switching that to someone that was closer to us, who I have recently fired. <laughs> and whenever we would go, Buddy would get like any shots that he needed. Buddy would get treatment for specific things. Like at one point, he had like pink, like an eye infection, but. Um, you know, every time I would go for his paws or for the licking, you know, at one point it was like maybe he has anxiety, so maybe he needs um like like it's like Xanax for dogs, so they prescribed him that. That just made him drowsy and like run into walls and it just wasn't helpful. Like I would leave and he would still be biting his paws. If I turned my back, he would bite his paws. Um we figured it had something to do with like separation anxiety. And I mean, I think to an extent, yes, um, absolutely. But at the rate that it was going, I'm like, it has to be something else. Um, so another month goes by, I'm noticing that like all of his hair is falling off. So if you can see, Buddy has pretty much permanently lost hair like under his arms. Um, you know, at one point, like, he didn't even have hair over here. And then you can see it's actually slowly growing back. Um, he had nothing on his paws. He still nibbles at his paws every now and again, especially once he feels lonely. It's, like, his habit. But the hair has grown back significantly. So from June until December, buddy. Hey. Hello. Hello. 
<laughs> Hello. <laughs> From June up until December, literally, I was afraid. And I'll insert, like, the picture of what he turned out, what his skin turned out to be after months. And, like, Buddy was always red. Buddy was always itching. Buddy was always swollen. Um... Wow, <laughs> look at this. Like, he didn't even have hair over here. Like, it's, you can see it right now. Like, it's trying to come back in, and it's coming in very, very slowly. But due to, like, what was going on, he may just, like, lose some hair. Like, it probably won't all grow back. Hey, bubs. Hey, chubby. Chubby chubs. Um, so, yeah. So, to get to it, because I know this is already, like, six minutes long. Um, I finally took him to a new vet here in Virginia. Um, I was like, at this point, I was just completely desperate. I was willing to, willing to take him to like a dog dermatologist. I just needed something because my dog was always in pain and, you know, he was just always irritated and I couldn't, ooh, <laughs> I couldn't leave him anywhere. Um, and I felt like, you know, at some point I would probably have to like give him back because he just, it was just always an issue. So we finally took him um, to a new vet after having a consultation with them and explaining like this was the situation. They thought maybe it'd be like mites, maybe it was something other than just, you know, alopecia forming, but we didn't know what it was forming from because at the time his original vet had said, well, he has a form of alopecia and they gave me like a spray. But the spray just made his paws very sticky and it that eventually caused him to bite and chew more. Well, after five <laughs> five long months, Buddy was um Buddy was given a skin scraping, which is something that most vets would do originally, but none of the vets did that when I went to take him to the vet. So for anyone that's going through something similar where their dog is just constantly scratching, constantly itching, constantly chewing, make sure your dog gets a skin scraping because it would be really, really helpful for the vets to like kind of put that scraping under the microscope so that who knows, like maybe mites will show up, right? Maybe there's something deeper, but you need to do the skin scraping for five months, but he didn't have that. Um, so we took him. And pretty much, he had a skin infection. Now, what was the skin infection from? It was from the chewing and the licking and the biting and then there being no hair to support and protect the skin. So, it turned out that he had a skin infection. Um, what the vet had told me was that she would suggest that he would do extra testing to figure out what he's allergic to. But... For the most part, the hair would not grow back because the infection wasn't being treated. So he was given, I don't remember the name of the actual antibiotic. I tried looking for it. I tried looking, I tried looking for the bottle, couldn't find it anywhere. And he was on antibiotics, had to take half a pill for 10 days. And in 10 days, slowly but surely, the hair started to grow back. He was also given, so this is apple quail. <laughs> you sniffing it? You don't even like it. He hates apple quail. The taste is disgusting, um, according to Buddy. But this is the apple quail she had given me just to kind of like, you know, um, let me see if I can kind of open it. Can I open it with one hand? No. But it's a small white pill. An apple quail, um, she'd give an extra just in the event that like his allergies would flare up again. Um, he's been doing pretty well. So the allergy pill was twice a day. Um, so give him half a pill twice a day for up to two weeks or even longer, depending on if he needed it. And then the antibiotic medicine, which was given to him twice a day for 10 days. And after 10 days, I saw significant improvement. And I will also try to look for some pictures and I will insert them. Now, something else that I did throughout this time, which has also helped, is for one, his bathing soap. So, yeah, bruh, this is what you use. So, Buddy uses Veterinarian's Formula. 
um, veterinary formula, veterinarian, oh, Jesus Christ, I can't talk, veterinary formula, clinical care. So it's an antiseptic and antifungal medicated shampoo for dogs and cats. Um, this is really good because it has ketoconazole in it. I use a very similar shampoo for my hair. Um, cause you know, I do, I have, Jesus Christ, I cannot speak today. <laughs> I have a uh, dermatitis, but this is what it looks like. You can get this from Walmart. It's about $8, $9. And this is what it treats, okay? So, you know, for allerg allergic and fungal dermatitis, which is what he was suffering from, um, cuts and wounds, endocrine diseases, allergies to fleas, and food ingredients. So symptoms, which he had most of these, which were redness, um, discharge from lesions, patches of skin becoming darker, so hyperpigmentation, which is what he was suffering from, itchiness, which is what he was also suffering from, alopecia, greasiness, and scaly skin. And Buddy had all of that. It was just really bad. And what it does is that it relieves, deodorizes, and helps heal and soothe the skin. It has aloe vera, which is really, really good. And what I would do, I don't do it now, but... I bathe him now about two to three two times a month now before it would be twice a almost twice a week or once every week and what I would do is I would bathe him apply the shampoo um, and I would like put it on him for five to ten minutes depending on how bad it was and then I would let it sit yeah I don't know if y'all can see but it looks like this <laughs> it smells really good um and um it doesn't have any parabens in it so i bathe him put the shampoo on and let it sit for a little bit definitely make sure that i got his paws because that is where it was truly needed um as well as the, under the belly because that's where he started to lose a lot of hair and then um i'd rinse it off and i would just let him air dry now that is helpful but the key to all of this was his food okay i changed buddy's food so buddy used to eat um kibble and what happened was when he was given to the shelter they had provided him they provided me with a bag of sport mix so it's like i'll try to enter the picture of what it looks like but that brand recently just got recalled for some issues so if you're using that, just be mindful. But the kibble was like th was like this big, okay? So he would like chomp on it. And at the time, you know, I'm a new dog owner. So I was giving that to him because that was the only thing he would eat. Um, they didn't really have the food that he originally was eating from his previous owner. So that was what they give to their dogs at the shelter. And he would eat that. And just a kibble this big and i mean y'all see buddy like look at him <laughs> he's only at the time he was only like 12 pounds he's about 10 pounds now he's lost some weight but his his teeth his mouth you know um he's really small and as i did more research on the sport on the sport mix brand especially the ones that they were giving him i think it's like sport mix wholesomes or whole foods it's like the chicken and rice formula that food that that dog food brand is actually for dogs who are like much larger than buddy but are also a lot more active but is is definitely an apartment slash lap dog he is only 10 about 10 pounds now and buddy is not as active um as like much larger dogs or dogs that are like huskies are where he does get a lot of exercise now which has contributed to him losing a lot of weight but at the time that that kibble just was not good for him and i think that contributed to the allergic reaction he was having um that kibble is also and most kibble is full of carbs you know byproducts of meat um and it, like sugar and just things that dogs really shouldn't be eating so what i have been giving buddy now is fresh pet um i've noticed a significant difference in his energy levels and the way he goes to the bathroom 
um you know just his overall health like he was suffering from like terrible dental um dental dental disease and he did get his teeth cleaned but like palatosis and stuff was still there and like him eating this fresh food is just a lot better um you know a bag this size is about twenty dollars i believe and then the smaller bag is about eight to nine dollars maybe eleven dollars so from anywhere from like eight to eleven dollars they have different types of stuff so they have ones that are like grain free for small dogs if you want to um if you want to tackle skin like skin issues they have some that comes in like a pink bag they have different stuff they have like patties they have like hamburger type of stuff chicken they have wet dog food and then they have the home cooked chicken recipe and this is what he loves um and i'll show y'all look at him <laughs> But this is what it looks like. It looks like ground chicken slash ground turkey. It has carrots in it. It's fresh, okay? There's cranberries. There is like spinach and stuff. There's, you know. So he really, really enjoys this, okay? This has definitely changed the game for him. His skin, his overall health, and just even how happy he is. Buddy would be the type of dog that would just sit there and be really sad, but he's really happy now. I mean, look at him. And then what he really wants. <laughs> um, I no longer give him anything that is like carbohydrates based. Sometimes, depending on what he eats, right? Because he'll get some of his carbs from whatever is in here. But he loves his turkey bacon treats. Um, you know, this is protein based, right? There are no byproducts in this. So... But he truly loves this, and this is what I have been giving him. I tried to cut back on the snacking of, like, dog biscuits, dog cookies, um, you know, dog cheeses, little things like that. Because I noticed that, like, it just, it's really not healthy for our dogs. And Buddy is going to be 10 years old, you know. And he's a chihuahua mix, so he can live up to who knows how much long. Um, and I want to be able to keep my dog very healthy. So if y'all are... If y'all have any dogs that are suffering from some skin issues and you're not getting any help from any of your vets, um, you know, please make sure you get your dog, your dog skin looked at. Please make sure that you get a skin scraping. Please make sure that you check for, you know, if there's yeast, make sure you are checking for like if there's an infection because oftentimes when the dog starts to lick and starts to bite, like it, there's an underlying issue and then there could be like a secondary issue that forms from that right which the issue which we're not 100 percent sure was definitely something some allergy stuff which was probably his food um which eventually turned into an infection because of the itching the chewing and like you know a number of other things sometimes i would put him his paws in like little booties just so he can stop scratching but like if the paw is wet and you just put his paw in a boot, which traps it and then heat forms and all that other stuff, it's going to cause the paw to stink. And as to how infections build up. So part of it is my fault, but like, you know, for other dog owners, and I can definitely do another video to go more in depth about it. Definitely make sure that like you are being mindful of what you're feeding your dog. Try to stay away from things like those kibbles, especially those kibbles that do not have like anything healthy in it right it's just fully carbohydrates make sure you do your research before you just start to switch your dog's food to something that you think seems cool or something you saw on tv because you never know what is going in your dog's food and if you wouldn't eat it why would you have why would you feed your dog something that is not healthy the other thing is dogs are dogs y'all don't need to be spraying little dog perfumes dog lotions keep it simple use something that is very healthy and is not going to break the dog skin out like a medicated shampoo or just a regular shampoo and bathe the dog if you don't trust bathing the dog with any of these stuff take the dog to pet smart or a pet co and have the dog be bathed there they're professionals they can do it um another thing is being mindful right when you wash your dogs anything right when you wash your dogs blankets their um what's it called when you wash their dog beds their dog shirts anything that you would put on the dog be mindful of putting any sort of like 
detergents that smell like roses or detergents that have heavy scents in it because that can cause for the dog to actually, you know, start itching and, and, and all that other stuff. Another thing is to also be mindful of, you know, where you walk your dog, certain plants, certain grasses, you know, if in your in your community, if you notice that like they are spraying pesticides in the um, what's it called? In the grass. Do not walk your dog there because that can definitely cause for the dog to have some flare-ups. Um, and then, of, you know, something that's kind of hard, but if your dog suffers from anxiety, if your dog suffers from separation anxiety at that, right, the dog can potentially, um, you know, self-harm and sometimes, you know, bite themselves, rip their skin out because that that is their way of coping. So, I hope this video has been helpful. I hope that y'all have enjoyed watching Buddy for over 20 minutes. Do you want this? Come here. He's gotten better with command, y'all. <laughs> here you go. Yeah. <laughs> but Buddy is now doing so much better, and I'm going to continue with his regimen. Keep it simple. Keep it cute. I do not add anything extra because I just don't. Right, Bubby? Hey. All right. Well, we're done here. Say goodbye. Come here. Say goodbye. Hey, say goodbye. Buddy doesn't like the camera, but say goodbye. <laughs> Show him your paws. Show him your new fur. You like a new man. Y'all can see it's growing back beautifully. It lost all the white hair, and now it has grown back. Oh, all up in the way. Here is his paw. I'm not sure why you keep bending. But here it goes. Here it goes. He's so cute. He had lost all the hair right here. It's grown back beautifully. Just little, little, little things on the back because he does bite. But all right, bud. Say bye. <laughs> Say bye. And yep. This is what he's doing. All right. Well, thank you all if you stay this long. Hope you enjoyed, buddy. And if you want a more in-depth video, I'll do one all right now. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time.